That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Reflecting Skin, uh, the 1990 directorial debut by novelist Philip Ridley, uh, which was just released on Blu-ray for the first time on August 13th by Film Movement. This was a weird film. Yes. Um, so my memories of this, uh, I remember paying a lot of money to find a rare copy in VHS. What's well, a lot of money? Probably like forty dollars. Which, as a thir- as a thirteen year old, uh, that's on, a lot of money. Now. It was a lot of money. Um, I think we still have that VHS in the shed. Great. Which we can throw away now. Um, but but I I want to say this film came up on lists of things I was looking at because of the kind of queer subtext going on in the film, which is minor looking at it today. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen it in almost 20 years. Okay. So the story revolves around... It's in 1950s Idaho, uh, and, and, um, amongst the rural... Wheat farmlands. Fields. Yeah, farmlands. Um, and it's about a... A young boy and his family. A young boy named Seth Dove, played by Jeremy Cooper in his only notable role, who's 10? Sure. Uh, living with his mother and father, and his dad owns a gas station. station, and his mother's extremely neurotic, and it turns out his father has some past homosexual uh, issues that all the townspeople know about. And when uh, one of... Seth's friends shows up dead in their well. Uh, the dad is uh, automatically accused because it collapses. They collapse pedophilia with homosexuality, and he self-immolates, and the gas station blows up. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and and meanwhile, uh, Viggo Mortensen plays his older brother, who uh, was serving in the military. Uh, and blowing things up in the Pacific and suddenly returns home uh, and is uh, suffering from radiation poisoning. And they have a neighbor. And they have a neighbor named Dolphin Blue, played by Lindsay Duncan, who's, uh, I think, the best part of the film, uh, who the Seth believes is a vampire. And she starts uh, having sex with his brother, and then tragedy ensues. And there are four boys driving around town. In a black Cadillac. In a black Chevy, a, a black car, uh, abducting well, children. Yeah, abducting. Yeah, murdering children and wi- and women too. There's a lot going on. There is a lot. Going There's on. a one a one handed, one eyed sheriff. Mm-hmm. There's uh, it, it opens with a kind of an infamous scene, I think, which is, uh, established it as an automatic cult classic, where the boys take this big bullfrog and blow air up its anus and explode. That's right. And hit it with a rock and it. Blood explodes in Lindsay Duncan's face. So there is so much going on in this film, but it's which... actually, but it's actually very. <laughs> oh, and there's a rod. There's a an ossified fetus with maggots that the boy sleeps with. Uh, yeah, uh, but but despite all those morbid details, it's actually very low key. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of dull for uh, having so much craziness. Yes. Uh, but it has a nice uh, gothic, what I would call a gothic tone to it, that, uh, that it keeps you uh, compelled. It, it kept you compelled. I was not compelled. I can see why this makes some people's lists of sort of like oddities and mm-hmm. wonders. I don't think it's wondrous. It is an oddity. It, so it, I'm not a fan of David Lynch. Uh, but I appreciate his weirdness. Mm-hmm. This film feels like feel, this film feels like it was trying to be Lynchian. Yes, uh, and did not accomplish that. Yeah. No, well, it's you know supposedly this allegory about the nightmarishness of childhood, but the uh, linchpin of the film, pun intended, uh, the child's acting uh, is kind of ruins a lot of the film yeah beyond it just being weird difficult to follow the symbolism is uh, so that vague but yes the main character which is the young boy played by 
Cooper. Jeremy Cooper. Jeremy Cooper. His acting is terrible. Yeah. Which may be a function of the direction, but either way, it's it, it ruins the film. Uh, and I brought this up while we were watching it. I think um, he looks a little bit like Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things, and that's a character you loathe. So I Well, I don't think... Uh, I don't... Aside from that, I still think his acting, his acting is, is bad. Is bad, yeah. and you know he's a kid, so I'm sure that had a lot to do with direction. Mm -hmm. Again, either way, it doesn't help. I found it interesting you didn't like how it was shot because uh, the cinematographer was Dick Pope, um, who shoots a lot of Mike Lee films. I didn't. I don't dislike it. I don't think it's visually arresting. It. It's just so many ways it could have gone that would have been better. Because for a moment, I thought I was going to get, like, a Tim Burton. It yeah, kind of yeah, felt like Edward Scissorhands-y. In the beginning, yeah. Right, and then it kind of felt Edward uh, David Lynch-ish. And then it just kind of is, like, diluted and weird for no reason. Viggo Mortensen, uh, a young Viggo Mortensen, is could have been compelling, but he isn't. He's okay to me. I think Lindsay Duncan's very creepy. She's um, the best part, for who, sure. Who did I keep getting vibes of? She reminds me of one of those characters from uh, the Underworld movie. Or <laughs> she looks like one of those vampires. She Tilda Swinton, David Bowie. Like the, yeah, she's she got a very cool. alien look about her. She's definitely the best part. but it... So the title, um, Viggo Mortensen's character has a photograph of a Japanese child, it's black and white photograph, and he describes it to his younger brother as this kid that was found in a cave that had reflecting skin, like you could see your face in reflected in the mirror. And I think as an allegory about childhood, this film is all about adults being able to see themselves in children and kind of that lost innocence as they age. Because Lindsay Duncan's last great monologue in the film is about warning this kid that he's going to get old and withered and the whole vamp the vampirism subtext as well um but the kid can't as we discussed can't take any of that in because we only live life going forward so the reflecting skin is our own nostalgia reflected back upon us this film is i don't know i'm audience. trying you're trying and i feel like you're doing more than the filmmaker did so that it's pointless like <laughs> it won a silver line. It won the silver line, which is the second place prize at the Locarno Film Festival that year, and it established him as an automatic filmmaker of note. His next film was 1995, *The Passion of Darkly Noon*, which starred Ashley Judd and Brendan Fraser, which is a film I don't really like, uh, but that played a can. And then he didn't make another film until 2009, um, *Heartless*, uh, which I had on a few years ago. I had to buy it on Region Two. Right. Well, based on his film debut, Reflecting Skin. Uh, there's a lot of potential there. I do think it's worth a watch just because it's it's a weird little film, but it's it doesn't make a lot of sense. The acting is not great for the most part. Um, I would give this film two out of five stars. Uh, there's a lot I do like about it, and maybe it's my own nostalgia for this film. Uh, I'd give it three and a half. Um, <laughs> out of five. I, there are a lot of things I really like about it. It reminds me of Tom. It, it also gave me that feeling uh, of um, nostalgia for Thomas Tryon's The Other, which was made into an okay film, but it was also a favorite book from my youth. Um, okay. And then Film Movement's Disc, uh, I'd give four out of five, uh, especially compared to what I remember of the VHS transfer. I think it looks great. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Great. Bye. Bye.